so today we'll be looking at the pie chart comparison. And if you take a look here, I've outlined what we're going to do. First, we will review the key aspects of scoring. How do the examiners determine your score? Then we'll go over the technique for writing. This is the technique that I teach my students. I will show you the notes that I would make, and then I will show an example. Finally, I'll quickly review the grammar. Now let's start here with uh, the band descriptors. So first of all, uh, most of you I assume are aiming for a 7 and possibly higher. So if we take a look here, it says uh, for a 7, covers requirements of the task, presents a clear overview of main trends, differences or stages, clearly presents and highlights key features, bullet points, but could be more fully extended. So you could be missing extension of the ideas and still get a pretty good score. To get a higher score, presents, highlights, and illustrates key features, bullet points, clearly and appropriately. All right, so that's what we're aiming for here, is to get that score a little bit higher in terms of task achievement. If we move to coherence and cohesion, um, it says here, logically organizes information and ideas. So is there a clear organizing principle behind your writing and a clear progression throughout? So does it move from one point to the next clearly? There's not one single way to do this, but as long as you have internal cohesion. And then it mentions up here, yes, the same, much the same thing. Sequences information and ideas are logically sequenced, okay? Then manages all aspects of cohesion well, uses paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately. So again, are you organizing your ideas and do the sentences connect clearly? And that's really important. You need the analysis for that. So in the first five minutes of this test, you need that analysis, all right? Um, so you need to understand how does the data points relate to each other, all right? So this is the most important thing, and this is the biggest thing that a lot of IELTS teachers miss, and a lot of classes will miss. Finally, uh, grammar. Now it says here in grammar range and accuracy, we won't talk about accuracy right now, but a variety of complex structures. So not just simple short sentences, but a range of multi-subject verb sentences. Uh, for a higher score, a wide range of structures. So every sentence or every other sentence is using some kind of more complex structure uh, when making sentences. Now, the technique that I typically advise is very simple. First, you take five minutes to analyze the task and make your notes and organize your notes. You want to decide how many paragraphs am I going to have. You want to think about, okay, how do these data sets relate to each other? Is there big change? Is there small change? Um, and then that comes to the second point, pay attention to the change, particularly values of 50% or 100%. And I'm going to add 30% to that now. Um, I think that's an important point as well. Um, anything that increases by a third or a half or doubles. So remember, double, half, or a third are key values that appear in a lot of IELTS tests. All right. So you take your first five minutes and you analyze and you make notes and you think about how many paragraphs you're going to do. And then you have 15 minutes, and that, trust me, is more than enough time to write your answer. A lot of people just say take two minutes, quickly analyze and make notes, and then start writing. But if you don't understand what's happening in the data, um, it's going to be very difficult. 15 minutes won't work. 20 minutes won't work. And I see it all the time in IELTS classes. Students take five minutes to analyze, and they can write it very easily. Some students just want to start writing very quickly, and after 20 minutes, they're like, you know, I need more time. So take the time to understand the data, and you'll get there faster.
Okay, so step two, we're gonna take a look at the task. My advice here, you're gonna take five minutes, pause the video, analyze this yourself, and think about that. What is changing in between these two sets of data? All right, make your notes, think about it. This is the important point here. I know you wanna to get to the sample, but I want you to take a look at this and see what you can see. Five minutes, pause it, go. All right, welcome back. I know you all paused it. So reading the task, the pie charts below show the online shopping sales for retail sectors in New Zealand in 2003 and 2013. So they're both in the past. That's an important point. Uh, I've made notes here. We're gonna take a look at them together. All right, so um, first of all, 2003, travel was the biggest at 36%. So you can see here uh, that we've got 36% for travel, uh, and that's more than one third of the entire chart. So that's more than a third of the whole pie chart. Uh, close is second at 24%, and then music and film are 21%, books are 19%, and that's nearly half the value of travel. So it's a little bit higher than half, but it's still something I would pay attention to. Because if you notice that, right, these two are very low, but they're both nearly half the amount. So if anything changes, it's interesting to note that. Secondly, uh, in 2013, film has overtaken the other forms, and now it's the biggest. So let's add that in. Now, biggest. All right. So if we look a little bit more carefully, uh, we can see here that film and music has gone from the second smallest to now the biggest. It's not quite as much as travel, but it's one-third of the entire uh, value of this pie chart. So keep that in mind. Notice that we had over a third and a third, slightly over a third and a third. The IELTS test very often picks these values of 100%, 50%, or a third. So pay attention to that because it comes up a lot. Uh, secondly, we've got travel falling noticeably. All right, and we can add in that point that it is no longer the number one. No longer number one. All right, so it's fallen from 36% to 29%. Uh, then we've also got in the end, what are the other two? Um, Books, you'll notice, have increased. They're no longer the smallest. So they've gone up slightly, 19% to 22%. So we can say that here. Uh, books grew slightly and is no longer the lowest. And close fell the most, from one-third down to 16%. All right. So again, we have this major change here where... This one has decreased from nearly a quarter. It's the second biggest one, but now it's the smallest one. All right, so that's something to pay attention to as well. And it's lost a third of its share. It's lost 8% of the share of this pie chart. So that's also something to pay attention to as well. Finally, I'll just make that my final point. So film shows the most growth and close lose the most value. So that's my overall. Films grow and close lose the most value. So that's the overview of the change in those two pie charts. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the essay sample. So the first thing I often recommend is do not stress about your first sentence. A lot of uh, teachers recommend that you take like you know, very carefully change everything in that first sentence. I generally don't recommend that. Even if you make a bunch of changes, but it's not changed enough, they will not count it in your word count. 
I don't even think they're counting word counts anymore. So if you're going to spend three or four minutes paraphrasing that task, it just doesn't matter. Make small changes like I've done here. 10 seconds, you should be finished that. So you can see here, the pie charts illustrate online shopping. I've made small changes. Don't worry about it. Here, overall, film and music showed the most growth. So past tense, showed the most growth, because again, these are both in 2003 to 2013, finished in the past. While close lost much of its, or their, either will work, initial share. They lost much of their initial share. So there's my overall. Uh, I've noticed this change. Biggest growth and losing the most. So you can see here, I've started in 2003. That's one paragraph. That's my first paragraph. And the second paragraph is by 2013. So you can see here that I've clearly used paragraphing and it's going to be done effectively. So just having those there make it very clear from the beginning. Now, just like when you're writing an essay, the first sentence of your paragraph should tell you a lot. So here, in 2003, travel was clearly the biggest retail sector. All right, so I've put that trend up. So remember, that is a key point. Put in your trend and then follow it with data. So that's a really important point that I want you to always be thinking about. Um, trend data, accounting for 36%, all right? So travel was clearly the biggest retail sector, data accounting for 36%. After this, so here is that cohesive device. I'm using linking language to connect carefully, all right? Now, keep in mind, I'm not using, you know, secondly. Um, I'm using a very simple after this, comma, close were the second biggest sector, okay? So I've used that same uh, past tense here, very important. Um, and again, trend, second biggest, data at 24%. So already it's very simple, comma at 24%, comma accounting for 36%. So I'm using two different grammatical structures already. Another key point if you're trying to get that higher grammar score. Then film and music as well as books made up 21 and 19% respectively. All right, so I, I don't include, you know, third and fourth. It's, it's not necessary at this point. They're clearly the last two. And then I have highlighted here both just slightly more than half the amount of retail. So I've highlighted that retail is the biggest and these two uh, they're not just the two lowest, but they are slightly more than half. So I'm really highlighting that they are a lot lower than the main sector, which is retail. So again, remember, you're highlighting key aspects of the information. Not only are they the lowest, but they're the lowest by nearly half. All right, so that's very important. These are 40% and these are 36%. So yes, you're right, uh, like it's, it's, they're slightly more together, but basically that makes it just about half the value, all right? So it's not the only way you're gonna do this in the IELTS test, but that's something to pay attention to, values of half. So already for that seven or eight, I'm really highlighting the information carefully. Now moving on to the next one, by 2013, there had been notable change in the sector shares. So all I've said here is a lot changed. A lot has changed. Now notice this, by 2013, there had been past perfect. So notice here, in 2003, past simple. By 2013, past perfect, there had been notable change. All right, so now again, I'm using a range of structures and a range of grammatical structures to provide the data. So notice that in past tense, by had been. Film and music had overtaken all forms of sales. So again, past perfect, 
had overtaken all forms of sales and had the biggest sector at 33%. Technically, I don't need that comma there. Apologies. All right. And had the biggest sector at 33%, increasing its initial share by more than half. So remember, they had 19 and now they have 33%. So they've increased by more than 10% of their original value. So that's actually 10% from their original value. And now they're 33%. And that's a really important point. So they've increased quite a lot. Uh, they've increased by more than half. Half of 19% would be 10%, and they've increased more than that, increasing its initial share by more than half. Okay, so again, I've identified and I've extended the data point and I've analyzed this key feature. It has shown a lot of growth. Imagine a company like Apple or Google. If they increased their market share by half the original value, they would be much, much richer. Then travels decreased noticeably. So travels share decreased noticeably, comma, falling to 29%, and then holding the second biggest share. So again, I've now got, I've used these uh, participle clauses again, comma, falling to 29% and holding the second biggest share. So again, I've highlighted this point that they've fallen and now they're second, no longer first. The share for books increased slightly, rising to 22%. So if we remember that was 19%, now it's 22. So we have that here, that very nice structure the share for books increased slightly, comma, rising to 22%, full stop. It, then I extend it. It no longer held the least share of the four sectors. So again, highlight the point. It's not the last one anymore. Finally, close. There's a comma there for no good reason. Finally, close had lost a substantial amount of its share, comma, falling to 16%, comma, losing one third of its 2003 share. Now, yes, you can see that I've used this structure a few times, comma, falling, comma, rising. It's a similar grammar structure, but it looks very different because it's got a different word in there. So it's a really sneaky way to show range. You're using a similar grammatical structure, but it looks different. Remember, if you just go first, second, then, it's very obvious. This is not. This is a lot more subtle, and so the reader doesn't feel like it's very mechanical. Losing one-third of its 2003 share and becoming the lowest of the four sectors. So if, again, I've highlighted that point. Not only has it fallen a lot, but it is now the lowest. So I've highlighted the change. All right, finally, we're just gonna look at that grammar a little bit more carefully just to highlight it. Uh, participle clauses. The share for books increased slightly, comma, rising to 22%. So very straightforward. Any of my older videos on pie charts, line graphs, uh, go check them out. They will also have this grammar multiple times. Travel's share decreased noticeably, comma, falling to 29%. So again, comma, ing. Finally, by 2013, I want to highlight this again, there had been notable change in the sector shares. All right, so here, by, had. All right, remember, if you have in, it's going to be past simple. In 2003, it was. By 2013, it had changed. So you're using that past perfect range of grammar. All right, here are the final thoughts. First of all, practice. Take this task, take any tasks from the book, and practice them. Five minutes of analyzing, and then 15 minutes of writing. Take it to your teacher, get feedback. That's the best thing you can do. When you get the feedback, make the changes. 
Secondly, you can re-watch these videos. If you like what you see here, watch it again. Internalize everything that's been said here. All the other videos cover this technique very much the same way. So take a look, watch them again and again if you need to. That's gonna get these ideas into your head and into your long-term memory so that in the test, you don't have to think about it. And finally, reading is one of the best things you can do for your writing. Um, read appropriately, my advice would be business news. So you can look at the BBC uh, business or environment um, news. You could look at any newspaper with a business section. Uh, in, in your country, it, there could be a number of publications available. Uh, in Australia, you've got lots of business news that you can find in the Age or the Australian. Um, but most newspapers and online newspapers will have a business section and I would strongly recommend reading those. You're going to see the language that you've seen here and you're going to learn more language that you can use. All right, everybody, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and as I said, check the other videos. There's many, many other videos that cover the same technique and uh, they'll help you get that score you want. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Remember, practice until you get it right and then keep going until you cannot get it wrong. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.